Hey guys, welcome to another Tuesday bonus video. This is where I have something interesting to share, but not quite substantial enough for a proper Friday video. So recently we checked out the HP T5710 Thin Client for DOS Retro PC Gaming. This machine features the VIA VT8231 Southbridge, which does have a hardware, Sound Blaster Pro and FM compatibility integrated. Unfortunately, HP did not activate this feature in the bus. The other day I got a comment on the video telling me that someone developed a tool that unlocks the Sound Blaster compatibility on this machine. And this person goes under the name of Jace Fox. The tool is called VIA SBCFG, so VIA SB Config. And it works with two South Bridges, with the VT8231, uh, which is in this machine, and also on the VT82C686. Also in this video, you can cast a vote on the top right hand corner of the screen. Do you prefer DOS footage to be shown in the traditional 4x3 aspect ratio or stretched to cover the entire screen? So just click on the top right hand corner and cast your vote. So in this video, we're gonna have a talk about compatibility, sound quality, how the driver works, but also at the end of the video, longer captures. So if you wanna check out those games in more detail and how they sound, um, you will find extended recordings at the end of the video. So in total, I tried 23 games. We have Doom, Doom 2, Wolfenstein 3D, Stunts, The Heart of China, The Rise of the Dragon, Willy Beamish, Prince of Persia and Prince of Persia 2, Epic Pinball, Iron Man, Lotus 3, Raptor, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. We have Lemmings, Gods, Alien Carnage, Tetris Classic, Blackstone, Aliens of Gold. We have Space Quest 1, the VGA version, Space Quest 5, Police Quest 3, Battle Isle and Gateway. So the VIA SB config tool comes with a readme file which has the full documentation, but it's really easy to use. You can run the tool on its own and it will configure the Sound Blaster Pro with some default settings, but you can also create a blaster environment variable if, for example, you want to have the interrupt on 7 or deactivate the joystick and the MPU 401 MIDI interface. This machine doesn't have a game port, so I have disabled the game port and also the MPU 401 MIDI interface, and I prefer the interrupt to be on 7. Now you need another driver, which is the VIA VMTSR. This is a driver that uh, basically does the FM. This driver needs 38 kilobytes of RAM, which is quite large, but if you use uh, expanded memory, it will load it into the upper memory region. And the good thing is, this sound solution, once activated, works with conventional memory only, works with extended and with expanded memory. But with the uh, FM driver needing so much memory, if you want to play a game that doesn't work with uh, memory managers, then you might be running out of memory. So let's talk about compatibility. Most games actually worked. So I would rate the compatibility of this Sound Blaster Pro solution to be extremely good. However, I did run into a few issues. Do note, I tested 23 games, so only a handful of games really had issues. Iron Man, for example, that game would just crash the machine, but works with the PC speaker option. I had an issue with stunts. For some reason, the engine sound would not play, but all the other sound effects, like if you uh, jump or if you uh, lose control of the car, those sound effects would play. So that was very weird. And I tried the PC speaker option, and here the sound effects work as they should. In Lotus 3, I had the exact same issue. No engine sounds, but all the other uh, sound effects in the game seem to be working just fine. So does the music, so very weird. Once again, you can just play with the PC speaker option if you need those engine sound effects. And with the Sound Blaster feature unlocked, the 
HP T5710 is a really interesting retro gaming PC. So look around if you can find one for a good price. It's definitely um, a really interesting machine to play around with. So inside is a PCI slot and you can use a PCI uh, riser card but only certain sound cards will work. I used an ESS Solo 1 and they can be hard to find. Very likely the sound card will cost you more than the entire computer. So this is a really cool breakthrough for the retro community and this is what I really like about this hobby. To this day people make new discoveries and unlock features in, 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 in machines and it's really exciting. And not just this machine, if your computer or motherboard has one of those two south bridges that I mentioned earlier in the video, you should be able to unlock the Sound Blaster Pro compatibility with these machines. In terms of quality, the Sound Blaster quality sounds pretty good, didn't notice any issues, and it works with games that can be difficult on PCI sound cards like Indiana Jones or Fate of Atlantis, for example and Space Quest 1 VGA, those games can be a little, little bit difficult to run. The FM quality I consider to be average. It doesn't sound like a, a genuine Yamaha Opel 3 at all, but this, this is one of those situations where any sound is better than no sound, and for many of you it might just be good enough. And if you want an authentic Yamaha Opel 3, you can still get that parallel port Opel 3 device, uh, but again, it might cost you just as much as the entire machine. And now if you want to check out some classic DOS games with Sound Blaster music and sound effects, this is where I say goodbye. Thank you for watching. If you found this video interesting, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, give it a like and share the video with your friends. Any questions, leave them down below. And yep, so now I'm going to cut together all the gameplay footage for you to see what this machine sounds like.
In ancient Persia, there lived a sultan who had an only daughter, whose beauty was like moonrise in a clear heaven. Now it happened that the sultan left his kingdom to fight in a foreign land. In his absence, the princess fell in love with a young traveler climb the palace wall to see her. This did not please the Sultan's Grand Vizier Jafar, who meant to marry the princess himself. Seizing power, Jafar had his rival thrown into the dungeons. The young man escaped and struck down the evil magician. When he learned of his vizier's treachery, the grateful sultan offered riches, but the stranger requested just one reward.
Ha 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 